Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about polarizing filters, how to use them, how they operate, uh, what the difference between a circular polarizer is and a non-circular polarizer. Um, the polarizing filter is probably one of the most beneficial filters you can buy and carry around with you at any given time. Good for landscape photography, um, just general photography. Um, it also acts as a neutral density filter, uh, which is also a handy uh, filter to have sometimes, especially if you're trying to get longer exposures, which isn't as common, but if you're doing landscapes, it's a little bit more common. Um, now, a polarizing filter and polarized light to, is kind of gets a little complicated with you know physics and and wave light waves, but uh, essentially, what if you imagine a polarizing filter to be a, a series of very microscopic parallel dark lines. Now the light can only enter it in when it's when the wave the light wave is in one orientation um, and so it can only pass through when the light wave is parallel to the lines. It can't penetrate it when it's when the light wave is perpendicular to these lines. So you get only light that's coming in at a certain polarity. Um, <clears throat> that's the basic general explanation. Now um, the one feature about the polarizing filters is that they can actually twist. So you screw it on and then the, the actual uh, filter part itself twists because then you, you, you change the orientation of these parallel lines and you filter out selectively certain kind of light. Um, light that is polarized to a certain um, orientation. That allows you to do some pretty neat stuff. Uh, one is cancel out like reflections on water. So if you ever see polarizing sunglass ads that talk about being able to see the fish in the water, that's what it's referring to is it actually cancels out a lot of like 80 to 90 percent of the reflection. And the other nice thing about a polarizing filter for landscape photography is that for blue skies it makes them much more dramatic, darker blue, so uh, the clouds really pop quite a bit better. Uh, I'll show you an example of that here shortly. <clears throat> Now, um, the nice thing about a polarizing filter, be, and the reason you actually might want to buy one, is because it's not something you can do in Photoshop later. You can't Photoshop the polarizing effect. You can't, um, you know, remove basically uh, filter the light as it's coming through the camera. So that's why it's the polarizing filter is, is really nice to have. And then, like I said, it also acts as a neutral density filter. A neutral density filter, it's neutral, means it's supposed to be neutral color, so it's not supposed to cause any color shifting. Um, and the density just means that it's, uh, it's like sunglasses, you know, so it's darker, uh, and so you can get longer exposures. This is good for when you're trying to do like waterfalls or rivers, and you kind of want that a longer exposure to make the water look like it's uh, a little silkier. Uh, effect something similar to this. Now it's not exactly true that it's a neutral density filter. It does shift the, the light a little bit to the blue uh, color spectrum, but you can correct for that, uh, especially if you you can do it in camera uh, with your white balance. You can do a preset or you can do some manual. If you know uh, what the Kelvin is, you can do a shift there. Um, or you can just set it um, on automatic and hope that the camera kind of captures it and then maybe make some tweaks later on in post-production. So here is an example of using the polarizing filter for the sky. So here I'm using the polarizing filter on the sky. So if I twist it, it lightens the sky and darkens it. There's the dark, lighter, darker, Um, so you can tell that this just makes the sky a little bit more dramatic. It looks nicer. Uh, the clouds stand out a bit more. And uh, if you're converting to black and white, that um, is especially true. You just get a little bit more dramatic sky. And again, what I'm doing is twisting the polarizing filter on the... Uh, as, uh, and when you turn it, you get different levels of basically polarization or filtration and, uh, and you just find the sweet spot. Now, what I didn't explain was that when you're using the polarizing filter, basically uh, it works 90 degree angle from the sun, the best. Um, the, the way that I've been taught is you point at the sun with your index finger and you have your thumb at 90 degrees. So wherever, so if the sun's over there, then 
over there or over there or directly above is where the polarizing filter is going to work the best. On a really wide angle shot, what can happen with a polarizing filter, and I unfortunately don't have a wide enough angle lens and a large enough polarizing filter to show you, um, you will get a band in the sky because you're seeing so much of the sky. You're seeing where it works the best and you're seeing where it doesn't work as good on either side. So you'll get like this band of sky that's a little darker uh, than, than some of the other areas of the sky. So that's a little bit of a problem when you're using a really wide angle lens. Let me explain to you what a, a circular polarizing filter is. Now, with the advent of more advanced cameras, probably starting in the 90s or so, when you're using uh, fancier light meters and autofocus features, um, what happens is the camera uses a polarizing filter to sample some light. So it hits the mirror and some of the light is redirected downward into the light meter or onto the autofocus uh, sensor. And, uh, and since that light's polarized, um, it doesn't work well with other polarizers. And the reason being is that when you get two polarizers together, so if, they're, if you have a polarizing that has parallel lines this way and a polarizing filter that has parallel lines this way, it becomes completely opaque and black. So I can show you that here. So now it's black. Now it's light, now it's black. So that's what happens when you get two polarizing filters together. Um, now imagine that you have a polarizing filter on your lens and you're using it and, uh, and the setting you have it at is perfectly 90 degree angle from the polarizing filter that's sampling off of the, um, off the mirror and all of a sudden it's black and it's throwing off what uh, it's throwing off the light meter and your autofocus. So, um, so they developed a circular polarizer and the way that operates, it has a polarizing filter on one side and then on the far side is what they call a randomizer. So it, it still functions, but as light exits through the filter, it becomes re-randomized so it's no longer polarized. So when light passes through a polarizing filter, it becomes polarized because now you only have light of one orientation. So in order to prevent that, so um, I have two polarizing filters here. One is a regular linear polarizer and one's a circular polarizer. Now, what I can do, as I have shown you earlier, is I get the two together and it completely blacks out. And now, if I use the circular polarizer and I face the part that's supposed to screw into the camera away from you, uh, away from me, towards you, and I have this, so it works here. See, now it's working. Now if I take this one and flip it around, Nothing. It no longer polarizes, it, it no longer cancels out the light. And that's why a circular polarizer is good for, for autofocus cameras and when you're using the light meter. Now it doesn't matter if you're using an off-camera light meter or if you're not using autofocus, then it doesn't matter, you can use a linear uh, polarizing filter. So let me just show you again. So this is the circular polarizing filter not working. Turn it around, now it works, right? Now this is a linear one. Oops, let me turn this around this way. It works. Turn this one around. It still works. So you can see that this one doesn't matter if I turn it around or not. This one it does. This one it doesn't work here. Turn it around. Now it works. Polarizing filters are pretty fancy. They're pretty nice to have. I definitely carry them around with me and uh, use them. You can, uh, if you have multiple size lenses, it's kind of inconvenient to get uh, a screw on type uh, polarizing filter uh, just because you're going to have to buy one for each size lens you have. You can get uh, a, a square holder and, and then adapter rings that hold different uh, for different lenses that's a little bit cheaper as one option. Um, I think that getting these glass uh, screw on type filters is a lot better. Um, just because uh, they're just nicer typically and you're not likely to get them as dirty. Um, now I'm going to show you up close with the polarizing filter how it turns so you can just see that function. So here's an up close of the polarizing filter. This side right here screws into the lens and then this side actually is meant to rotate. This little dot right here is to give you an indication of the orientation of the lens, but I mean, so does the text. And so you can see this is a Tiffin circular polarizer, 72 millimeters made in Japan. Screw it on, 
and then you adjust on the camera by twisting this to see to maximize the uh, the polarizing filter for the given scene. So I hope that answered a lot of your questions about what polarizing filters do, uh, why you might want to get one, uh, what a circular polarizing filter is. I think there's a lot of misinformation that a circular polarizer, somehow the, those lines I was talking about are somehow in a circular pattern in the lens. That's just not the case because uh, it just would not function that um, at all that way. Um, the, uh, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Um, I do have a blog that I, I tend to post to on occasion, so you can uh, have links for that down below along with a Twitter account that uh, will update you at least when I'm posting a new video, Facebook page um, as well. So thank you very much and uh, hope to see more of you. Thank you.